Hello YouTube, hi, this is Fahad from Future Phones and uh, I have come with another case study of uh, these laptops uh, that we are fixing in our store and uh, this is uh, an SS laptop and it came in for no display. Mm, I have done some initial checks and I wanted to share this uh, case study with you. So maybe if you have a similar problem then you could solve your problems or if you have a device that you want us to fix we can fix also for you. Um, maybe you will learn something out of it. I'm quite sure you will learn out of, out of it something you know. Okay let's start. Uh, let me switch to this bigger cam and uh, we will see. This is an Asus laptop and it came in for no display the model number is uh, I can barely read it you know, this model number it's too small and this is a K55A so this model number is K55A and it came in for no display my initial checks as always is uh, my DC power supply in the corner is set to um, 19 volts and 5 amps I'm inserting the power into it and I will check how many milliamps is uh, drawing and uh, this is the first thing to start with okay now it went to 845 and then 728 milliamps so it's drawing enough power to power in this laptop so almost like it, the laptop is powering on in a way you know like almost there is so there is something stopping it to power on at uh, 728 milliamps I'm just move this mic you probably see that yeah this about 730 and it's stuck at 730 milliamps 743 milliamps so it's just varying between 700 and 800 milliamps so when this sort of uh, power is drawn by a laptop board this is usually like um, uh, you could say that laptop is almost powering on and there is uh, no um, shortage also at 19 volt rail so if there was a shortage on the 19 volt rail then this light will go red and it would go uh, it will indicate that there is a shortage on it so I'll just remove it let's do our basic testing as we always do so we're just removing the power removing this keyboard I've already as I told I'm already taking the screws off and Okay, this is the power switch cable so we know that this is the power switch cable so power connector power on connector you could say anything okay we have uh, another connector here so I'm going to remove all these first of all connectors remember I've taken the screws off <coughs> We have the charging port. Okay, I'll remove this for a bit. I'll move this out of the way and um, change my camera to the. Okay. Right. First thing first, we know that uh, it's a 19 volt. Um, it is drawing enough voltage. So if you can see my multimeter see my multimeter I'm quite sure you should be able to see the multimeter the green thing and okay let's just one minute let's set this up okay with 19 volt there I'm going to check my battery pins and I have DC range select I have 3 volt so crap you know. I think it's not set properly yeah, it's better okay I have 3 volt at battery pin number 1 pin number 2 and pin number 3 so I have 3 volts at battery pins so my first 3 volt rail is fine 
now I'm going for the I'll check one more place just to make sure that 3 volt rail is present everywhere okay this is the super IO and uh, any of the pins of the super IO will should have a 3 volt LAN the corner pins um, let me go into the microscope and do it in the microscope okay we could see that microscope and uh, let's see no 3 volt no 3 volt no 3 volt no 3 volt is it something to worry about no 3 volt no 3 volt oh, there is something there but nothing almost nothing oh there is no 3 volt that's something to worry about ok let me check my battery pins again so I have 3 volt in the battery pins ok why supplier is not given 3 volt ok so remember 3 volt goes to battery battery pins any of the corner pins of the super io okay wow that's something oh we have a 3 volt at this pin must have missed it before so we have a 3 volt at this battery pin here uh, I, I super IO pin so we have we can confirm that the our 3 volt um, oh, we can confirm that our 3 volt rail is working fine and uh, 19 volt is also going in so the next thing I'm going to check on this board is uh, let me just go into the bigger camp right okay we have uh, some arrangements of the buck converters on this board so we will we will go and check what sort of voltage is coming on these um, buck converters um, inductors of the buck converter right okay so we know that uh, 3 volt is present okay this is sorry just other way around this is 3 volt was a 3 volt I just saw 3 volt minus 3 volt yep we have a 3 volt at D and this is the the bat this is connected to the battery pins so we have 3 volt on this coil ok let's check the other coils ok it's for the graphics there is nothing here nothing here nothing here ok anywhere else nothing nothing here there is nothing here ok there is nothing here ok there is nothing there ok nothing there ok we have a 5 volt there as well so at this coil we have a 5 volt Okay, let's check more there's nothing here so let's turn the board around so we have only 5 volt and 3 volt available so that's a very good sign actually but it's a difficult one could be a difficult one as well so no more coils here so we'll leave this area as it is so we know that we have a We have 3 volt present here and uh, at this pin uh, at this uh, coil and we have a 5 volt available here also for this is a 5 volt LDO most likely okay now I'm gonna do one more thing since we know that this laptop is turning on um, with the power connector as you know that uh, in some power plants some voltages are made after the power uh, the the laptop is triggered to power on so 
Now we have the this power. Okay, I'm not saying this is the Microsoft. Okay, okay. We this is the power button connector. Okay, for this laptop. Um, for this laptop again we don't have the schematics we have only the board view available so uh, we will open the board view and we will check um, what which pin number is the uh, the pin for the power on because we don't want to just connect to any pin and just um, make even more um, worse this laptop you know don't want to make it even more worse okay let me open my board viewer software i know we have only the okay my desktop is here okay file asus k55 vdd okay so we know that we are looking for the power button connector pins and uh, they are on this side of the board is it the one fpc connector okay so on this side we have this i'm quite sure it's this one. Oh yes this is the power switch is on number four so number four is the power switch that's good okay microscope so we will go for the number four we will power this laptop on let's see okay it's powered on and if you look at this uh, board again the, the this laptop is on right now i'm going to quickly check some of the powers so we know that uh, we had the um okay we have the multimeter showing that's good okay let's see three volt is it still coming yes it is coming so it's still showing three volt to the battery pins and we had the five volt present before so we have five volt here okay okay and what is here now anything yep we have a three volt so after we triggered and the laptop powered on we have a three volt also present here okay let's see now more do we have any power here okay we have a 1.5 so this area is okay anything here be here okay 1.05 this is okay so this area is fine this is okay this is okay this is okay this is okay let's check this okay 1.8 this is also okay okay no problem so let's check these okay 0 0.96 0 0.96 0 0.96 so these coils also indicate that the this area is also okay so we have checked everything except for these ones let's check them okay 0 0.0017 which is negligible so there is nothing here all right so this power is still missing which power is this now we need to trace which power is this okay i'm gonna open the board view for this laptop and uh, just uh, rotate it accordingly okay, okay. yep so are we at the right side yes so we have these two coils here we didn't have any power okay and this is the VCCSA and VCCSA again are these the coils 
no it's not okay I have to uh, sorry I have to mirror the board just to make it look as I can see it okay not not these ones but we are looking for these two okay it's the graphics right, okay graphics is not generating graphics that's why we have no display on the screen all right okay let me go to my face cam with you now all right so in this situation we see that we have a laptop with no power there is no graphics on this one quite possible the graphics I see is faulty but it's not giving any voltages to the graphics that's another problem right okay okay so no no display no display let me show check for the shortage on the graphics line if it is any short if it is short to ground then we have an even bigger problem B print okay, no. okay let's see okay it should beep but it should beep with some value so then it should be okay yep that's fine 4.0 is very promising okay I'm going to check in the diode mode now. So there is some resistance which is okay. Okay, so that means our CPU is not all dead yet. So we have power coming through everywhere, only we do not have power in this area which is the um, graphics area we don't have the power here so uh, we can check it so as I was saying you know like we have power everywhere except for these two coils and these two coils are for the graphics and they are connected to this big IC here which is uh, CPU and uh, in graphics parts also in there so we are not getting power for this graphics now in this case where we have a we have all the power coming and graphics power is not generated we can go for another option we can check the bios we can check if the bios is faulty if because the bios is the very last um, part after the laptop is triggered and so many powers are checked this is the very last part where which gives signal to um, generate the power for the uh, graphics so we can check that okay we don't know where the graphics uh, the bios is so i'm going to my desktop and i will check in my PDF for signal for the PCI PCI maybe S PCI S P C I P P C I not P P C I P C I okay where do we have signal for PCI mm -hmm. Okay, we have PCI signal so many places. That's not fair. Okay, we are. Sorry, I had a customer, so I had to pause the video. Now um, we are looking for the the BIOS of this laptop. So I'm gonna search for. Don't know if you can see that. Uh, I'm going to the desktop mode part search as PCI or PCI signal 
okay sp c spic signal okay right okay so it brings me straight to the the bios of this laptop okay it's uh, it's in the corner let's see uh, so this bios is in the corner somewhere it's probably this one this I see this is the BIOS okay so okay, let's reprogram it okay I'm gonna take this out and use the programmer and uh, we'll see how it goes okay my hot station is on temperature is set to 420 and let's use some flux I don't know uh, yeah it can make it even more okay. yeah it's better let's remove this bias before I want to remove it I want to mix my let it solder to the pins just to make it a low temp solder so I can remove it easily a little bit more flux shiny now I can pick it up yes good um, board in the side and let's do with our programmer that's my IC and uh, if you want to read about it there's a max max IC so let's test this with the SVOD programmer. Okay, I don't have a cable for programmer. So I don't have the cable for this one. So I've just got a new cable out. Let me connect to my computer. my SVOD programmer I'm going to connect this cable. so I'm going to connect as soon as we connected the SVOD programmer my microphone stopped working and uh, the live audio stopped working so i'm doing a voiceover although i hate doing voiceovers i don't like it i'm just doing a voiceover for this video only so i put my bios ic into the zip socket of this uh, svod programmer now um, you have to match with the the number one pin which is the where is the, where the dot is for the BIOS IC on top of the BIOS IC you will find a dot that's the number one pin which the dot position is this and it goes in this uh, um, position on the SVOD programmer so you just carefully put uh, these pins in and make sure number one number one pin goes to this location and close it lock it and uh, your SVOD programmer is ready now uh, we will go to the uh, SVOD programmer um, just we will load it up 
it may take a little bit because uh, my computer is running a bit slow and um, once it's running we will write the new uh, file on the BIOS and uh, hopefully things should be okay um, so the the program is still loading up and uh, I will also share the location of uh, where I downloaded this uh, the bin file for this uh, BIOS um, the, the BIOS uh, has a particular type of files that go in uh, is a bin file um, and okay now um, the programmer the programmers um, SVOD programmers is loaded um, because the IC is ready I'm just selecting 25 flash SPI 25 flash and I'm starting with the lowest voltage voltage available which is a 12 volt however I have a connection problem so when you have a connection problem with the the BIOS uh, is not sitting in properly to and is not connected to those pins um, you have this sort of error so I'm gonna adjust the BIOS uh, and make sure this it makes a good contact with those pins so once uh, okay this is a zoom problem just sort it out um, I'm I'm happy with this uh, connection now yeah and uh, this uh, when this is sitting in properly uh, I should not receive that message hopefully yeah okay push it in adjust it a little bit and once this is adjusted okay now I'm making a good connection with those uh, pins so it should read and uh, just pr pr press re uh, retry and test pins are okay so it's made a good connection with the BIOS IC however since the voltages are very low uh, there could be problem uh, in reading the IC properly now I am uh, selecting a little bit higher voltage which is uh, 1.8 is still problem then 2.5 and uh, we we can read this IC on 2.5 volts so um, usually it should work on 3.3 volt as well but I always like to go with the lowest voltage okay I'm going to read it now and in the hex view you can see now there is some data this data is the in the binary format obviously I've saved the red file which I have just read I can just put the date here for this file or the model number it can be anything just made a backup of the BIOS once I made the backup I can open the downloaded file which I I will um, share with you where I downloaded it from so this is the clean file and uh, selected the bin file open and write it I'm writing the the new file into the BIOS chip oh. while this is happening I will share with you uh, where I downloaded it from so I write on the model number of the laptop this is K5VD ok 
okay something is wrong so it's kk i'm just removing k k5 5 vdd and bios so i found this bios in the bad caps forum uh, which is the number four link which is this one and uh, the one i downloaded is this file um this one this has been downloaded 807 times already so the the writing of the new file is done complete and when we press the right button um it also erases and check blank check and verify these options also occur when i'm writing this uh, file uh, to the bios so our bios is uh, ready with the new file now uh, we will install it to the to the board and we will check it if it's made any difference <coughs> you can close this program now and i'll go to the microscope remove the the bios ic from here and uh, disconnect the VOD programmer and my BIOS is ready it's ready to go onto the laptop it's a bit blurry okay in focus now okay before I install it I need to make sure it goes in the right direction and this is uh, where it's supposed to be the number one pin uh, it's a bit dirty but this is some flux residue so it should be a problem so I can add more flux move the IC heat up the solder once the solder is in the melting point I can put the IC and adjust it uh, okay So this bit is almost done. I'm just going to adjust it. Uh, just bit press it down. So the BIOS is installed to the board with the new file. Just cool it down because it's a bit warm at the moment. This area. Once the area is warm, I can just clean it with isopropel clean it a little bit more okay I just check the pins if the pins are soldered properly and the pins look okay if the pins are fine we can go ahead and test if the the new file in the BIOS has made any difference to the board okay I will insert 19 volt as we did previously so you have to keep an eye on the um, the DC power which is in the corner here see 19 volt and 5 amps it's set is ready and I'm inserting the 19 volts into the laptop so showing no shortage I'm just powering it on again with pin number 4 I will connect this pin number 4 to ground once uh, I've done that uh, the laptop has powered on and if you can keep an eye on the DC power uh, where the amps is showing and it is increasing look 1.308 it's a different thing is is doing something different now so I'm quite sure something has changed after I have installed the um, BIOS into this uh, motherboard okay I'm gonna put this board into the housing and check if uh, anything has changed so 
uh, I will not connect all the pins I will just connect the display pin in the LVDS connector okay just make the board sit in properly and check it okay the pin the connector is in properly now uh, this 5 volt I just leave it I won't connect it now and uh, I will insert the power back into the laptop and see when I power it on um, does it give a display because uh, it went all the way up to 1.23 milliamps so that's a very good sign this uh, this is the sign where it, when the laptop mean this this 1.2 milliamp means that something has changed look we have a display on the laptop so the laptop is working now so this is fixed so this laptop uh, had no display before and this is working now and with the new bios so the old bios was corrupt and the files were corrupt in the BIOS so this laptop only needed um, a new BIOS file and this is fixed now this is pretty good now yep it's, it's working now I'm gonna do further testing but uh, our main job is done which was to power it on and uh, look this laptop is done now we have a display fantastic brilliant Thank you for watching and uh, I hope you learned something from this uh, video. Uh, we, will ex uh, we will add more videos to this uh, uh, channel. Uh, like and subscribe if you like this video. Uh, do comment uh, if you have any suggestions or if you want to ask any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Thank you.